The number one reason people get underwhelming results out of their Komodo is because they're using the wrong exposure strategy. Exposure strategy for the Komodo falls into two parts, highlight clipping and noise protection through the use of ISO, and properly dialing in the physical light level hitting the sensor. In this video, I will go over the strategy for the ideal physical light level, which when applied correctly, will give you unsurpassed image quality under any lighting condition. Wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. Like Sun Tzu said in The Art of War, every battle is won before it is fought. So is your exposure either going to be on point or doomed even before you touch the camera. Unfortunately, there is a lot of misguided information in the ether on how to properly expose a digital cinema camera. Perhaps for other camera brands, there are alternative approaches to exposure. In my opinion, automated cameras with auto ND filters and auto ISO can get away with really any exposure strategy. But manual cinema cameras like RED cannot. If you do not apply the right exposure strategy, you will get underwhelming results every time and spend hours in post in vain trying to recover your footage. The misconception on how you should approach the physical light levels for the RED Cinema camera come from a lack of video acquisition specific knowledge. The false notion that the RED sensor is light hungry and needs ETTI, exposure to the right, or as much light as possible, comes from digital photography. Since the rise of Canon 5D Mark II, photography and videography has seemingly merged. The problem is that photography and videography couldn't be more different in their approach to image capture. From video's log format to dynamic nature of videography and static nature of photography. Applying photography's ETTR theory to videography is like using soccer tactics in a gridiron game. Saved by camera automation, most remain ignorant to their wrongdoings until they buy a red Komodo, claim it's nothing special, and trade it in quick smart for something automatic. But there is a reason race cars are made manual. If you ain't first, you're last. I think the right strategy is really self-evident, once you understand the technical limitations of the red sensor. Also, if you're enjoying this type of content, please do subscribe to the channel and give some love to the like button. I like you, Lloyd. I always like you. When it comes to exposure, it's really a simple proposition at first glance. A balancing act between too much light and too little light, or noise and highlight clipping. If you underexpose your image, you will have noise, like you see on the left. If you overexpose, you will clip your highlights, like the clouds on the right. The problem lies in the fact that more often than not, you have to trade one for the other. Perfect exposure in a scene, especially on a budget, is hard to come by and you will have to choose to either have noisy or clipped footage. If you follow the EDTR approach, you will either clip or get as close to clipping as possible. This is like punching with your face instead of your fists. <laughs> Whatever the justification may be for EDTR, the fact is that once highlight clipping occurs, it's unrecoverable. It can happen in a single color channel or throughout the frame. Yes, sometimes it's unavoidable, but all possible steps should be taken to either avoid it or protect it. Unlike celluloid, the digital sensor's highlight clipping is abrupt, harsh, and uncinematic. Once a threshold of maximum light level is reached, a digital wall is hit and no further information is recorded. So nothing can be done to improve it in post. It becomes a perfect example of baking in a look into your footage rather than getting it technically right. Highlight clipping is the Achilles heel of a digital sensor. Noise, on the other hand, is gradual. In post, it can be cleaned up with denoising, shadows can be lifted, and especially with raw 16-bit codec, detail pulled back out. When you now look at these two images, I hope it's becoming self-evident that the one on the left is still technically sound, even if noisy, but the one on the right is technically inadequate and needs to be reshot. To put it plainly, in Red's own words, you should err on the side of shadow, as this will retain the most information possible and give you the most flexibility in post, 
This doesn't mean to underexpose things like skin tones, but this does mean to dial things down from in-scene lighting to your frame exposure levels. A perfect example of this is any modern movie shot on a digital sensor. My Iraqis. Why do? There's a reason they're all so much darker than their past celluloid counterparts. Unlike celluloid, the strength of the digital sensor is in the shadows or noise. You get better color fidelity and saturation, texture, dynamic range, highlight roll off, and of course, skin tones by staying on the side of shadow, giving the sensor only as much light as necessary or favoring less light than more. But even knowing this, the proposition of exposure should not be underestimated. More often than not, you will have to break rules and clip in tricky dynamic lighting conditions. Not to mention, getting proper skin tones and a pleasing seeing latitude still remains a skillful art. But having the right red Komodo exposure strategy will allow you to approach any scene with confidence and get that famed, unsurpassed image quality every time.